Hey Z, come here. That's a good girl. Dog over here with me. I got my dogs with me. It's a great Monday, man. <laughs> I'm hot, man. I just finished hooping, playing basketball, sweating. Uh, it's a great Monday. Uh, um, man, talk about a weekend. You talk about a sweep. We got, uh, of course, we got Trump fired. So we got that W and the team Biden. Um, the Raiders. Man, they gave me like five heart attacks. My Raiders got a win. And not only was it an epic game, I'm always happy. Um, I live in Atlanta. Anybody who watched my channel know I'm an ATL. I was originally a Falcons fan for a long time. And I saw I'm in Atlanta. Um, I did live in Oakland too for a while, um, by the way, for those who are curious why I'm a Raiders and Warriors fan. But um, the thing is, man, when you live and another people who know who all over YouTube know this. When you don't live in the same city as the team you follow, it's always a pain in the ass trying to watch games. So you be really happy when you get national games that are like primetime games. Those are the best. Um, next best is like what I got yesterday, where it was game of the week on five. We got in Atlanta for some reason, I guess because the Falcons were. I don't know. I don't know how it works out. Why we get some games and how all that shit works. But luckily, we got a Raiders game locally. And I love when I don't have to try to stream it or do all this extra stuff and I can watch it on DVR and do my thing with skipping commercials. So it was a glorious game. Ah, man, uh, kept me on my edge of my seat literally until after the clock was gone. And uh, I just want to say, uh, for once it worked. Uh, you, Everybody knows this feeling too, no matter who you're a fan of. You know, some games your team gets their ass whooped, and it's just like a they lose bad so badly that you can don't have to watch the game until the last seconds. You know what I'm saying? If you get beat 25 to 10 or something, you know, at some point comes in the game in the third or fourth quarter, or so many minutes left that you in your mind accept the loss, and or assume it's going to be a loss, and you turn the game off and go. And sometimes you might have been wrong, and it's the comeback. But for the most part, everybody has that point that in their head that they go, uh, all right, man, this game's over. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go do X, Y, Z. And but in close games, there's always that moment in games, especially games that end on the last play in any sport. On the last play of a game, when your team loses, there's always like a period of like zero to 30 seconds, somewhere in that range, where you sit there and you stare at the screen and you pray for the guys or the refs to bail you out of this loss. You're like, somebody, come on, put pass interference. You're waiting for it. You're like, I need something, baby. Come on, don't tell me it's over, baby. And this one meant a lot to me because it was um, it was local. And I was thinking, everybody watching my Raiders right now, especially people in Atlanta watching my Raiders right now, I want them to put on a show. And uh, it was a good game. And that final play, when I thought he caught that touchdown, my heart melted, my heart dropped. I was thinking, what video am I going to make, man? And I sat there staring at the screen like, no, let let it be. Don't let it be. And then they showed it again. And I saw that ball hit the ground and joy. And even sweeter was seeing all the Chargers celebrate for like 10 seconds. <laughs> they were celebrating like they won the Super Bowl, too. And it was a beautiful win. And so right now, at the halfway point of the season, after eight games played, um, the Raiders have a worse record than I thought they would, but they're still in the same exact position in the end of the day I predicted they would be. Now, if you don't remember, I predicted before the season started when I saw the schedule, I predicted the Raiders would go 12-4, and four, and I predicted we would be a wild card team because I predicted that the Chiefs would still win the division even though I had us taking one game from them. We've already taken one game from them. 12-4, um, and four, we're already on pace to do worse than that if we keep playing at the current pace, but it's still not, it doesn't, you know, mean it can't, we can't still do better than it doesn't mean we still can't go 13 and 3 or 12 and 4 it's still out there we've only lost uh, three games we're five and three we're ranked second in our division right now the chiefs are eight and one that one loss is us we beat them um so we're right in the mix of the playoff race i mean if in the afc right now all of the potential who would be wild card teams right now have four and five wins so if you got five wins right now you right in the thick of it or whatever and then come to the falcons you know my hometown team who i said i didn't say it on this channel i'm not gonna stop following them i just don't root for them no more i can't buy their merch you know blah 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 i ain't gonna give you a whole speech but 
this game had a lot of significance as well because you guys are playing our division rival Broncos and they get that win they're only really like a game or two games back from us you know what I'm saying trying to get in that wild heart car hunt as well because our division is basically the Chiefs and then everybody else trying to get that wild card spot especially with it being an extra wild card seed out there this year so Falcons came out I really wanted y'all to win this game because it's the hometown team. And I really wanted y'all to win this game because the Broncos are a division rival. Y'all did that. But let's just let's just call it what it was. Um, it, it, this was not a story of the game itself. This is a, I just want to call it what it is. At the half, it was 20 to 3 or something like that. 27 to 10 or something like that at the half. And we all know the real story for the Falcons is we all know they're going to jump out big on anybody. The real story was, can they survive themselves? And I'll be honest, I didn't watch your whole game. I recorded it, and um, I fast-forwarded just through a lot of drives just to kind of cut the tension or whatever. Um, I watched it after the Raiders game, even though it came on earlier. So just to get, you know, uh, shout-outs to the Falcons for getting the lead and holding on to it to the end. Um, still kind of embarrassing the way they managed to, like, have – all them three and outside the end of the game when they kind of it's like always the same story they just need a first down they just need three points they just need seven and yeah that's when they choose to go three and out um you know they have plays where i don't i, I question this is something that's a rare take people don't really go here but i mean it's how i feel and i don't, I don't think i'm pulling this out of my ass the super bowl says it as well this is a I don't want to make this a racial thing. It's, I hate when people just try to make everything a racial thing, but I'm trying to make a point here. A lot of times with black quarterbacks, they get labeled as an athlete and then have to prove their football intelligence. You know, they have to do things like Pat Mahomes. They have to show you either in the field room or through their play what their football intelligence is um, and to make people, you know, say like, oh, this guy, his IQ is crazy. He understands the game. You can tell he studies the game. These type of things. Mean, and I'm not trying to make this a race thing, but it seems like a lot of times with white quarterbacks, especially when they're good, and Matt Ryan is one of the better quarterbacks in the league, nobody is debating that, I don't think, who really is serious about football, no matter how you feel about him or if you really like him that much. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. He doesn't suck. And he's good. But I question his football intelligence, or maybe I question his situational awareness. That's what I question. I don't question his intelligence. He knows more about the game. He forgot more about the game than I'll ever know, Matt Ryan. But I question his situational awareness in situations like the Super Bowl where you could audible or do something different than what's called. I question how many times I see Matt Ryan like throw a ball away at a point in the game where they need to be killing clock. We're at a point in the game where maybe, and you're not getting a field goal in this situation where like a sack would be a better option than you throwing this ball away or just changing the audible to a run that gets no yards just to kill the clock or make the opponent have to use timeout. It's like sometimes I question in the situation, like, why is he such a robot? And I saw that again. I saw that again in that game. So it was like props to them for getting out big. Um, I saw him throw an ugly interception, but I saw him throw a really great ball as well. So it was like Matt Ryan, that's who he is at this point. He's inconsistent. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. You really cannot count on him late in games. And... The real problem is that when he doesn't have great coaching, he's not going to buck the system when you need him to. He's not going to take and manning that shit and just be like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not running this play because I want to win this game. So they don't have that killer instinct, but I'm glad they got the W. I guess from the outside looking in, I'm glad they got the W. But I'm going to tell you the truth. If I was me a year ago and I was really in on that shit, and I was really on that Falcons bandwagon, I would be miserable right now because this is what you knew what happened. It's like, lose all the games. When when there's, something, when there's something to play for, they lose. And then once it's like pretty much established that it's out of reach, but not official that you're out of the playoffs, then they want to put together a little something that is just enough to, one, fuck their drive position, and two, just enough to reel their fans back in. Not me. I ain't no sucker. I ain't going for it. Even if they was winning, I told y'all I wasn't back on. But they, it's like they do the same shit every year. They get y'all, they get a couple quality wins, just enough to make you go, damn, they better than their record. What could they have been? Maybe they still can if they go 8-8, eight eight, if they go 7-9, if the fans, they start getting your brain doing all these calculations and only just to you know they're not making the playoffs. Like I called it and I'm standing by my prediction for y'all. Y'all going to finish the season with about five wins. Four Quinn, I had zero. 
when the fire queen, I said, okay, this will queen out the way, they'll end up with about five wins this year. Y'all already at three. So y'all stay on the current pace, y'all might end up at about six and ten. Horrible. The worst thing can happen for you. It's like every year, it's the same story. Look at all them ballers around the league. Quentin Williams and Chase Young, who y'all could have had. Mm-mm-mm. But it was a good weekend, man. I don't want to rain on the parade. Um, you know what I'm saying? Wins around. Got Trump out the way. Um, I got all I needed out this weekend, man. So Raider Nation, stand up. Warriors. I'm about to be making some Warriors videos in a minute. We got the draft on the 18th. They just announced the NBA season is kicking off on December 22nd. That's the best Christmas gift us Warriors fans could get is some basketball with Clay, Steph, Dre. We got a whole new cast of characters. Those who didn't jump off the bandwagon last year, we know that we got a bench that's strong in this bitch. All the teams who was just in the bubble about to be tired. They don't want to see us. We got all the energy right now. So, uh, Warriors, I'm going to see y'all in this bitch, man. And, uh, Atlanta Falcons fans, those who was way more loyal than I was when I jumped my bitch ass off the bandwagon, y'all stay strong. Y'all keep y'all heads up, man, because good things gonna come for y'all. And it ain't gonna be this year, but y'all got Quinn out the way, and that was one of the big, biggest and and Dimitrov out the way. And now uh, and now uh, I'm I got optimism for y'all, man. So keep your heads up. Get rid of them ugly ass jerseys. But keep rocking your old jersey. Keep your heads up, man. And uh, I got love, like I said, in one day. When the Falcons win their Super Bowl, I'm going to be making this video, not jumping back on the bandwagon, but I'm going to be the first one making a video saying congratulations because y'all deserve it. I'm not going to be no hater. Love.